So, we have seen methods of preparation of aliphatic ethers. Now, let's take up uh, a process for preparation of aryl ethers. Okay. So, in this, we take up the sodium salt of phenol plus an alkyl halide. We are left with pH representing the phenyl group O and R. Alright, so this is a very simple in the presence of, of course, in the presence of a base. This is this reaction happens in the presence of a base. Alright, fine. So when the sodium salt of phenol reacts with any alkyl halide, we get a aryl ether. Alright, so this is very simple. Okay, let's take up a short example. So, now on phenox, sodium phenoxide reacts with, let's say, propyl alcohol in the presence of a base. We get fine propyl phenyl ether or phenyl propyl ether phenyl propyl ether okay so um, all right i hope you have understood this right so let's assume you need to prepare A phenyl an aromatic ether or an aryl ether as this. Now, what would you use? Right? So, many people are again uh, oriented or they think that they can, they could have used sodium, they could have used a uh, halo benzene plus the sodium salt of the aliphatic alcohol to obtain this but this reaction won't take place because of the because this bond won't break due to the nucleophilic due to the nucleophilic action of due to the nucleophilic substitution of this this won't take place why because these halobenzenes take up a double bond character these halobenzenes take up a double bond character as can be explained by the process of resonance all right <clears throat> so this take up a double bond character now what happens this has a negative charge this has a lone pair so an electron is like this so we get a Cl plus negative charge over here and this now this moves to this I hope you know how or uh, to make resonating structures of a compound okay now, this moves to this We are left with this and finally when this moves to this we get this. So as you can see out of the five resonating structures, three resonating structures 
has a double bond in it all right so the bond order between carbon and chlorine in this case is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 divided by total number of resonating structures 8 by 5 so the bond order is 1.6 as it was not evident when we were only looking at the uh, structure of chlorobenzene the bond order between carbon and chlorine is not 1 the bond order is 1.6 so it is trying to gain a double bond character the bond between chlorine and carbon is trying to gain a double bond character this is tending towards 2 all right so by the simple attack of the alkoxide ion on this uh, on this molecule won't uh, won't be enough for making uh, an aryl ether like this and a uh, ethyl phenyl ethyl ether this this is not enough all right because the this nucleophile uh, this nucleophile cannot is not strong enough or the substrate is not good enough that this cl minus leaves and as this carbon chlorine bond is very tough to break because it is gaining a double bond character i hope to understand this okay so taking up the sodium salt of phenol or the sodium phenoxide and chcch2cl didn't work so we need to take sodium salt of okay um, i just confused in the previous example i said that uh, taking uh, the the uh, the sodium salt of the phenol and alkylate won't work actually this works uh, it was a slip of tongue okay so only this works taking up chlorobenzene and the sodium salt of the aliphatic uh, alcohol won't work all right i hope you understand this and please pardon me with these slip of tongues okay so the human is there okay so i think you understand the problem and then try to uh, figure it out what what actually is going on over here okay so this is the reaction that will in presence of a base will give the product as the aryl ether as shown above all right so taking up the sodium salt of the phenol and uh, an alkyl halide the reverse won't work out all right i hope you understand Moving on, let's uh, take up some reactions of uh, of ethers. The most interesting part of ethers is the is the uh, reaction of cyclic ethers. So I would uh, I'm tempted to take those examples first. All right. So let's take up a cyclic ether as this. All right. So this is the simplest one, epoxide. All right. So when this reacts with C2H5OH in presence of an acid, what happens? okay so let's see what happens so we have h plus in the system okay so h plus is attracted towards the electrons of oxygen so it attacks oxygen now we are left with this a positive charge on the oxygen atom okay now the positive charge in the oxygen atom is not stable so one of the two bonds attached to this oxygen atom will break all right giving rise to a carbocation okay so since these two bonds are equivalent we can break off any i am breaking off this one so now we are left with and a plus charge over this carbon 
all right so this is very simple this bond is hydrolytically cleaved the electrons are transferred to the positively charged oxygen atom giving rise to a positively charged carbocation all right and the neutral oxygen atom okay fine now we have c2h5oh in the solution so i'm rubbing off with the initial stages of the reaction all right 